So let me just first start with the reaction to that. Uh, Garrett Nussmeyer pulls the trigger. Your thought when you saw it? Well, I think it was a long time coming. LSU had been the program to beat for a while in this recruitment. They were first to offer. Scott Linehan coached his dad. Uh, he's known Coach Callaway for a while. You know, Coach Orgeron does well with all top targets. It was a good relationship, and, and uh, LSU uh, pushed for him as hard as they pushed for any quarterback, and uh, he, he wants to come and help this program win another one. Does he, Garrett Nussmeyer, check all the boxes to be a major national type recruit at quarterback? Or if not, where where might he be? I don't want to say deficient because it feels like you're splitting hairs, right, Steve? But where are some of the other guys that rank higher? Maybe where's the differentiator? Well, you never truly know what they're going to be in college for Nussmeyer. When you look at him right away, you you like that he threw for over three thousand seven hundred yards and, and thirty eight touchdowns. Uh, as a junior uh, for Marcus and Fireman Marcus, and I think he took them pretty deep in, in, in the state playoffs off the, off the top of my head. He's one of the top signal callers in the country. Um, six, one and a half, 182 pounds. Uh, there's certainly quarterbacks that resemble him in the NFL. And uh, um, slight build, I guess, would be the, the, uh, area that you would point to um but uh he's a coach's kid and, and a guy that sees the field well and, and, and makes good decisions with the football and, and a guy that uh, has all the has the traits to you know be a good quarterback in the sec at lsu put together a hell of a commitment video too i tell you what like the, the production about that kid? <laughs> yeah i even sent that kid a message i mean that was a damn good video uh, that <laughs> Uh, of the, I think I think Garrett just showed up as an actor, and, and that kid that kid that put it together, uh, drawing a blank, but but Garrett tagged him in, in the tweet. He did a hell of a job. Yeah, man, it's amazing. You can check it out if you want at uh, Garrett's Twitter page. This is Steve Wiltfong, National Director of Recruiting for Twenty Four Seven Sports, on Twitter at s wiltfong two four seven. So the other very obvious question that follows is, okay, well on the same day that Garrett Nussmeyer announces his commitment, Caleb Williams has LSU in his top three. Uh, as best you can tell, where does LSU stand with Caleb Williams? Well, I think that they are the biggest challenger to Oklahoma, but the crystal ball is with the Sooners. And I talked with Caleb Williams' dad today, and he said that uh, Nussmeyer's decision doesn't impact them and that LSU has been open about wanting to take two uh, this this cycle. And we've written about that on Go247 and talked about it on 24-7 Sports that Miles, Miles Brennan has a big year. He's draft eligible. And, and, and then what does your quarterback depth chart look like? It's very young and, and so and thin again. And, and so uh, if Miles Brennan stays, you're, you're okay with one this cycle. But uh, you got a plan for best-case scenario for Miles, and I think if LSU can get the right two guys, they, they would take two this cycle. And, and, and for Caleb Williams in particular, LSU led for him in the fall. And then you see Joe Brady take a job with the Panthers. Coach Munoz takes a job with Baylor. And according to the family, those were his best relationships at LSU. And, and those were guys that Caleb was comfortable learning from. And, and uh, for Caleb, his decision two-pronged. Uh, one, who can develop him into the – who what, what school gives him the best opportunity to be developed into a number one draft pick? And uh, two, which, are the, which program – uh, has the coaches on staff that teach him that 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 teach in a style that's conducive to him learning and, and within an offense that fits his skill set and and so uh, they feel great about that with Oklahoma uh, still learning about it with LSU and hasn't ruled LSU out because he could have committed to Oklahoma yesterday you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. or he, and Maryland's in the top three and 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 I still believe that ultimately he'll pick Oklahoma. But, but right now, at this point, they love LSU. They love the university. And the fam family even said, look, all talks with LSU right now are based around the offense, getting to know the coaches and their, and their teaching style because we love the university. And so we'll see what happens uh, uh, moving forward. And they, and they want to get down to LSU one more time with Caleb's parents and, and Caleb's private quarterback coaches. But on the flip side, if Caleb Williams committed to Oklahoma tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised either. Steve, how Maybe one of the one of the things we've talked about here in the last several days certainly is perhaps one of the biggest parts of this is just the fact that LSU is in the mix for a five-star quarterback, which just hasn't been the norm around here, right? How much of that has to do with 
what LSU did this past season. And is that something that's, you know, that's can be replicated by, by LSU? They can start to be in on these major national guys at quarterback. Well, certainly if Miles Brennan carries the torch and doesn't even necessarily have to win the Heisman Trophy or get drafted in the first round, but just play at a high level and get drafted, now all of a sudden Ed Orgeron uh, can point to uh, his staff and, and his program and say, we're developing quarterbacks now. And Oklahoma's in the mix for all these top quarterbacks because they see the Sooners have the number one pick in the Heisman Trophy winner twice. Uh, and then Jalen Hurts goes in the second round. Now, a part of that should be uh, uh, credited to his development at Alabama as well, but Lincoln Riley brought it home. And, and, and then um, w- with LSU, you know, they've had a first-round pick and a Heisman Trophy winner now. And, you know, Miles Brennan's up. Let's see what you can do. Steve Wiltfong's our guest. A couple more minutes here. He's the director of recruiting for 247 Sports on Twitter at SWiltfong247 there at 247 Sports. Uh, what about the rest of this LSU class? If there's one thing, Steve, that maybe people are a little leery about, it seems like post-title it's been a little slow to get going. Uh, to what might you attribute that? Well, I just think that a lot of the kids at LSU recruiting and in and, uh, they're just not as ready to make their decisions. And it, 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 it's highlighted by in, the, in Big Ten country, those kids tend to come off the board faster than the kids in SEC country. And uh, they did so even, even with the coronavirus pandemic where I think outside of Tennessee really rolling right now, a lot of these blue chippers in, in SEC country still aren't ready to make their decisions and their timeline. The, the top guys LSU is recruiting right now, their timeline's not conducive to uh, being as fast a starter. But I mean, LSU has the number 11 class in the country right now. They have a ton of, of top three, four, seven guys looking at them. I don't feel sorry for the Tigers, and neither should you. They're going to make they're going to make a move, and, and so it's just a matter of when when the guys are ready to decide. But that's fine. Was a big win. I mean, Landon Jackson out of Texarkana, Pleasant Grove in in Texas. Uh, he was considered an A&M lean most of the process. He's in LSU's class. JoJo Earl uh, is a nifty wide receiver out of Alito, Texas, one of the more dynamic slot guys in, in the country. And, and he also committed in April. So LSU over the last couple of weeks has had some big recruiting wins, and, and maybe they're about to start heating up. And, and I left Xavier Carter out of there, out of that. But he, he's a six foot four edge guy that committed on the first day of this month. So. Um, uh, uh, maybe your maybe your question would have applied a couple weeks ago, but they're starting to roll there uh, at LSU. Last thing for you, Steve. Can you give me a comp for a program that is has done what LSU's done in the last two years, which has gone from being really a a state and regional recruiting team to one that's been successful in casting a, a wide net like LSU has in the last two classes. Well, I think part of that is because Coach Orgeron you know, has coached in several parts of the country now. And uh, then obviously LSU's brand is powerful. And then through social media, uh, it's easier to connect with these kids. And, you know, LSU has, has a great product to, to sell. Uh, they always did, but now, you know, they're, they're, they're the defending national champs. And, and so uh, that, that resonates. You're seeing Clemson also. Uh, going outside their backyard for for a prospect here and there, uh, but home cooking is, is where where LSU and Clemson and, and Alabama and those programs are going to make a living. And I don't mean home cooking just in the state, but in their region. And uh, um, certainly, you can go out of region and land a blue chipper here and there. But the fate of those programs is going to be decided on uh, who you land from your region. Were they the right guys, and did you develop them properly? Of course, you can follow LSU's coverage at Go247.com. And Steve Wiltfong is the National Director of Recruiting for 247 Sports. Make sure you're following him on Twitter at SWiltfong247. Steve, we always appreciate a couple of minutes, man. All the best to you and yours. Man, appreciate it. And make sure you guys are locked in today. And Billy and those guys on Go247, have a good one.